Passengers wept and prayed in the darkened air cabin, but the massive turbines of the Airbus A330 remained quiet. With 75 miles of the Atlantic Ocean between it and land, the plane ran out of gasoline. The date was August 23, 2001. At 11.52 p.m. UTC, Air Transat Flight 236 took off from Toronto, Canada, heading for Lisbon, Portugal, with 293 passengers and 11 crew members. Captain Robert Pichet, 43, was in command of the Airbus A330. He has 16,800 flight hours under his belt. Dirk de Jaeger, his 28-year-old first officer, had 4,800 hours of flight time. The plane had 51.6 tons of fuel on board when it took off from Toronto, which was five tons more than the regulations authorized and six tons more than the flight's requirements. This particular plane had just over two years of active service when the trip started. Soon after takeoff, air traffic controllers instructed Flight 236's pilots to change their flight course 60 degrees south to avoid congestion over the Atlantic Ocean. In the first few hours of the flight, takeoff went smoothly. The night was serene and tranquil, and most of the passengers were asleep. After around 30 minutes, the pilots received their first indication that something was wrong. An alert warning appeared of excessive oil pressure in the right engine, as well as low oil temperature. This was a strange issue that the pilots couldn't explain. They assumed the oil notice was a false alert and that something was wrong with the plane's sensors. They notified the Toronto Maintenance Control Center of the incident. The Toronto Maintenance Control Center instructed him to monitor the situation closely. The pilots received another alarm at 5.36 a.m. UTC. This time, the plane informed them of a fuel imbalance. The pilots still suspected a sensor malfunction, so they followed the usual procedure to correct the imbalance by moving fuel from the left wing tank to the right. The oil pressure continued to fall and the temperature continued to rise, indicating a lack of fuel. The pilots concluded the warning wasn't a fluke at this time. Something terrible had happened. They summoned the lead steward to the cockpit and instructed her to peek through one of the passenger windows to determine if fuel was flowing from beneath the right wing. The night, however, was pitch black and she couldn't see anything. They left with the petrol that would not allow them to reach Lisbon, Portugal. At 5.45 a.m. UTC, the pilots opted to divert to Tessera Airport in the Azores, which was their only choice for landing in this massive Atlantic Ocean. Three minutes later, they reported a fuel emergency to Santa Maria Oceanic Air Traffic Control. After receiving this information, the ground crew began planning an emergency landing. Meanwhile, the vast majority of passengers were sound asleep or watching movies on monitors above the seats. The flickering cabin lights and the announcement over the loudspeaker in Portuguese, French and English that the pilot is experiencing difficulties and they should prepare for a water landing worried the passengers. Some people even burst into tears. The cabin crew instructed the passengers to remove their life jackets from beneath their seats. Engine hash 2, the right engine, blew out at 6.13 a.m. UTC due to a lack of fuel. The plane was 170 kilometers from Tessera Airport and flew at 39,000 feet. Captain Peacher instantly started descending to 33,000 feet, the normal single-engine altitude for the Airbus at the time. The plane could actually fly on a single engine, and the pilots were determined to keep it in the air. They also disconnected the fuel transfer pump. Passengers heard a loud click, as if a component of the plane had failed. The engine's scream started to fade. The lights in the cabin had already gone out. The pilot sent a Mayday flight to Santa Maria, to Sierra Airport, and air traffic control 10 minutes after the right engine flamed out. The left engine likewise flamed out due to full thrust three minutes after the Mayday call at 6.26 a.m. UTC. 
the plane was just 75 miles away from Tasira Airport. To make matters worse, because there was no engine power, the planes, flaps, brakes and spoilers lost hydraulic power. Fortunately, the proper deployment of the Rat Ram Air Turbine provided the necessary power for critical sensors and flying instruments, along with sufficient hydraulic pressure to operate the principal flight controls. Without motors, the plane was gliding and dropping at a rate of 2,000 feet per minute, about twice the height of the Empire State Building, much like a paper plane drifting in the breeze. The plane had dropped 30,000 feet, about the height of Mount Everest, and the captain had to glide the rest of the way. It is quite difficult to glide a passenger plane without engines. Everything depended on the plane's pitch, which the pilot controlled manually using a stick. The pilots believed that they had around 15 minutes before having to ditch in the ocean. When the plane was 15 kilometers away from Tasira Airport, its height was 13,000 feet, when it should have been about 3,000 feet. Therefore, Captain Pichet performed a 360-degree rotation to dissipate excess altitude during the engine-out glide. Passengers huddled in the darkness as the jet trembled and bounced downward. Many people became ill and vomited. The pilots performed a final S-turn and aimed the plane at the runway. As it slipped against the asphalt, the plane scraped and grinded. We maximized emergency braking and maintained it. The plane eventually came to a halt. The hit caused the eight main tires to lock up, as well as substantial damage to the landing gear and fuselage. Rescue reaction vehicles quickly doused a small fire that broke out near the left main gear wheels. After gliding for nearly 75 miles without engines, the plane successfully landed. When the investigation into the fuel leakage in the right engine was completed, it was discovered that prior to takeoff in Toronto, the maintenance crew had changed a part of the engine, but that part belonged to a different plane, causing vibration that burst the fuel line passing nearby. Flight 236 was the first and only passenger plane to hold the record for longest non-engine gliding. The passengers began to celebrate when the plane finally came to a stop. The difficult landing resulted in minor injuries to 14 passengers and two crew members. Captain Pichet and First Officer de Yaga were heroes. According to the investigation, Flight 236 lost 12 to 15 tons of fuel each hour. Following this event, Airbus installed a new system that will allow pilots to identify fuel leaks on future flights. One year after the event, Captain Robert Pichet and First Flight Officer Dirk de Jaga received the Superior Airmanship Award for successfully executing a dead stick landing on an Airbus A330. Flight School is currently studying Flight 236. In December 2001, Air Transat restored the Airbus 330 and re-entered service as the Azores Glider. The COVID-19 pandemic, which struck on October 18, 2021, forced Air Transat to place it in storage in March 2020. Air Transat flew the aircraft on its final voyage before returning it to its owner, Aircap. Its future application is unknown. Thank you for watching this video. Give that like button a little tap dance and don't forget to give that subscribe button a loving squeeze. Let's spread the love and make those buttons feel appreciated.